Are there any, any other animals this could be used for, let's say, in the future? I know you're not thinking that far probably mm -hmm. right now, but... Um, yeah, actually, the dairy industry or the, the cattle industry, um, especially in the dairy industry, they actually deal with a lot of uh, cows being lame because of abscesses um, and infection and things like that. And uh, I, I, I know that they've tried using AI to kind of help um, discern that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, the cattle industry and then actually... Um, I, as in my research of doing, you know, knowing how to tackle this problem, um, I came across studies done on camels, racing mm -hmm. camels, actually. And that was definitely not on my radar, but apparently where, where you know, people live where there's a lot of camels, they camels, like to race them. Yeah. And, so uh, the Middle East, probably? Yes, yes. Oh. Yep. Yeah, that's actually going to be huge mm -hmm. because this is uh, a reality transportation, for transportation and for... Well, mainly transportation mm -hmm. in those areas, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So really, any large animal that people don't tend to think about, in, in they don't tend to consider pets. Right. I yep. would think, yep. right? No? What's the, they typically call them livestock. Livestock. Yep. Okay. Yep. Livestock. Okay. So that's that's a way to look at it. Okay. So it, yeah, the, the reach of this is not 6.3 million anymore. It's, it's, you're looking at what, the tens of millions now? Mm-hmm. Based on globally, you know, yeah, yeah, globally, based on the other animals, the, the cows, the camels, and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Now, let's go back to horses, right? How do you see your device or your technology overall um, being used in horse equestrian events up to the Kentucky Derby mm -hmm. or the Olympics? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so when it comes to that, it would be you know, it would be something that would be able to take some of the human bias out of, you know, judging these these events and be able to bring in a little bit more um, uh, leveling the playing field and, you know, ensure like a higher degree of integrity as well. Uh -huh. so, so take out human bias, increase in integrity in the sport, integrity in the sport. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've seen... I'm not an expert in this space, mm -hmm. I, but the little I know is, yeah, at least I know that there's a lot of a lot of things that happen to these animals, mm -hmm. and some of them are being fed a certain way, some of them are being injected with things, and mm -hmm. and there's probably some improper things going on. Right. Right. So, it, anything this would cause a lot of problems. Like if if this if if you were tracking the 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 uh, the, the the animals. It might cause a lot of problems and, 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 and reveal a bunch of secrets, no? Yeah. And honestly, you know, ideally that would be one of the big positives that come out of it because, you know, it ties back into, you know, adding more integrity and, you know, at the end of the day, eliminating the suffering of the horses because when they're being injected with a lot of stuff, it's to mask that they're in pain when they're performing. Mm. Basically, they're just kind of souped up and meant to cross that line as fast as possible, no matter what. Wow. Mm-hmm. All for money. Yeah, I mean, it, it. Not not every horse out there, you know, racetrack horses like that, or you know, they're, they are managed that way. But there's a lot of them, and so being mm -hmm. able to, you know, help shine a light on some of the bad actors would be with technology would be ideal, honestly. Yeah, I see that. Um, let's let's talk about uh, the flip side of it, which mm -hmm. is okay. So we've talked about integrity. We talked about taking out human bias, but can it? be considered an unfair advantage if say for example you mm -hmm. decide to go into the Kentucky Derby and mm -hmm. you, Derby and you have you have your trackers on your on your horse and you can sense whatever is happening to your horse would it, would it provide you an unfair advantage or the souped up horses will probably do better anyway um yeah if anything the souped up horses would probably <laughs> wind up being to, because the idea is you know not to i mean basically we're just monitoring how the horse is moving mm -hmm. it's there's nothing um that is creating a, an advantage of uh, you know, to the rider, it's basically what we're bringing to the table is a higher level of awareness of what's going on with the horse and how they're moving. Mm. Okay, I would I would be very curious to see if the you know the International Olympic Committee, for example, the IOC. I don't know who regulates the Kentucky Derby, mm -hmm. Derby but let's talk about the Olympics. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be curious if if they would implement something like this to just um, say, okay, if you're going to compete in the Olympics, yeah. Okay, we got to put all this stuff on your horse, then we got to detect what's happening, make sure the horse isn't, it's pain-free and just ready to compete like the way uh, an 
well, some athletes actually are souped up too. So <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say uh, the horses should compete just like humans, you know, compete, you know, the 100 yeah, meter dash, something like that. <laughs> but you're souped up too. Mm -hmm. So, so what am I even talking about? Uh, but, uh, but it'd be nice if they, if they try to, uh, you know, make these events more humane to mm -hmm. the animals, you know? For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing is, is that, Horses ultimately love doing their job. They love mm -hmm. having, you know, engagement with people. Um, what they don't love doing is being asked to perform when they're in pain. Mm -hmm. So when they start having resistance to being asked to perform, people will assume it's because the horse is, you know, being unwilling. But the truth of the matter is that the horse is usually suffering some, some kind of discomfort. So if we can you just kind of help clarify that, um, because ultimately... Most people love their horses and yeah. they don't want to do anything that causes them harm. And, you know, they're not actively out there trying to do anything that would jeopardize the health of the horse. Um, so but it, it just comes down to just a lack of awareness of what to look for that, you know, indicates that the horse is happy, healthy, correct and balanced uh, versus one that's, you know, struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Horses like to do their jobs. OK. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, so let's go beyond the competitive landscape and uh, talk about how the technology would benefit uh, horses themselves and riders just, you know, on a ranch, uh, uh, just everyday living. Mm -hmm. How would, I know you've talked about it a little bit, but let's just talk about it in more detail. Okay. How do you see this improving the life of horses um, and, and the riders overall? Um, the, the way it would improve the horse's life is that, um, whenever they start to struggle with dealing with any kind of pain, um, the riders would become aware of it sooner and be able to address the issues sooner. Um, and that's, that's really the, the whole idea and the name of the game of just being able, cause it's like, like anything else, you know, um, the longer, uh, uh, problem exists, the harder it is to correct. Um, mainly because especially it becomes this domino effect where it's like, it's not just one area of the body that's affected, it's multiple locations in the body that the horse is struggling with. Mm -hmm. So by being able to bring awareness to the riders that something's going on and the horse needs to have um, you know, either a change of tack or chiropractic work or acupuncture work or something that will be able to address the issue, one, it gets the the problem addressed at the core, but then it also helps the rider understand that whatever they were doing before that kind of led up to that, to now stop doing that and do something differently. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty good. That's mm -hmm. good. 